up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. I make videos on fashion, travel, and environmentalism. If you like any of those things, you should consider subscribing to my channel. You can probably tell I'm a lot tanner. I'm a lot cooler. A lot more confident. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be unpacking my backpacks from my three month trip in Southeast Asia. If you're new to my channel, hello. I just came back from a life changing trip. Everyone who's asked me about my trip is always like, how was it? And the best way I can describe it is that it is everything and more. It met my expectations and also exceeded them. I had such a fantastic time. If you don't know where I've been, I backpacked through Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Indonesia for the last three months. I traveled only with a carry-on and a personal item. So my main backpack is my Eagle Creek Tour 40 liter. This was the main one. And then I had a personal item. It started off with just a simple roots backpack that I had from home, but that actually broke. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that that broke in Thailand. I think I was in Koh Tao when that broke. And so I had to buy a new backpack, but this is just a normal size backpack. That was on my front. My tour 40 liter was on my back, and that is what I traveled with. Honestly, I do not regret it. I love this bag. A lot of people are asking me for a review on this bag, so this video will kind of talk about in detail why I like this bag, how it was traveling with a 40 liter, all that jazz, and spoiler alert, I loved it. I highly recommend, and everyone who saw me with my 40 liter was like, that bag's pretty small compared to mine because a lot of people travel with like 60, 70, 80 liters. Almost everyone told me, they're like, I didn't need this much stuff. I wish I traveled with a 40 liter. I could have saved on baggage fees at the airport and I could have saved my back because traveling with a bunch of stuff is just so annoying. I even found myself getting like, not annoyed, but I was definitely like, wow, this is, there's some stuff in here that I did not need. But I think overall, for the most part, I'm pretty proud of myself for the way that I packed. And yeah, let's just get into the video so I can tell you what I did. We're gonna start with what was in my main backpack, the Tour 40 liter. A lot of it was packing cubes and clothes. So to start, I have this really small, I think it's the extra small, yeah, extra small Eagle Creek. All that was in here was my period underwear. If you know me, I love reusable menstrual products, and so a lot of my period underwear was really helpful when I was traveling, and I highly recommend it. I highly recommend packing cubes. All the packing cubes that I used, I really liked. I went out before my trip and bought some Opsbury packing cubes. These two had my shirts in it, my shirts and my swimsuits mainly, if you want, you can go and see my packing video. So the video I filmed right before I left. Then I had these packing cubes that I've actually had since before this trip. I can't remember where I got these ones, but if I do remember, I'll put them in the description of this video. These packing cubes actually have like an accordion style. You can pack them in and you can, what's the word I'm looking for? Get out the air. Compress, compress, compress is the word I was looking for. You can compress them and make it tinier. And also something that I would do, a little backpacking pro tip, is when I would have these completely full, I would sit on them while I was packing my luggage. So when I would put everything in, I'd sit on it and while I was packing up other things and it kind of compressed it even a little bit more before I put it in my backpack. Let's talk about the pants that I brought. Here are all the pants that I've come home with. Okay, first, just because this is what's on top, is my North Face pants. I actually bought these in Vietnam. There's a lot of these like made in Vietnam stores where they have like potentially counterfeit, potentially not stuff. I feel like they're legit. They're, these are nice because they're super versatile. They're lightweight, but I can fit stuff under them. When I was in Northern Vietnam, I wore my leggings under these and I felt that that was warm enough when I was doing the Hajang Loop and Sapa and all that stuff. They have cut off zippered bottoms so you can wear them as like board shorts or you can wear them as full length pants. I do wish that I had originally bought more long pants or maybe something like this before my trip but it was no big deal because I was able to purchase one. That's the thing, overall very proud of the stuff that I brought. The only thing I would say is that I didn't plan for Vietnam being so cold because I didn't realize northern Vietnam was going to be cold. That was a uh, misstep on my part. Then um, you'll see before if you saw the packing video, I had two skirts, 
This is one of them. Then I have a black one. Love the fact that I brought skirts. I found the skirts were really versatile, especially long skirts for temples when you need to have your knees covered, but also just like when you want something lightweight. Some countries were very, very hot. Thailand was very hot. Cambodia was really hot. Indonesia, I found those were the hottest places and sometimes you just want some sort of airflow. <laughs> for sleeping, I just had these like comfy like champion shorts. These were great to have on me. I also really enjoyed like lounging shorts for travel days sometimes or just going to the beach. Then I have these black pants. Um, these black pants, I use these a lot as well. These are like a capri length dress pants sort of material. They're just from Babaton from Wilfred. I found I use these a lot again because they covered my knees at temples and they were really lightweight and flowy material so I could wear them even when I was dying of heat. And they were black so they were just so versatile and they just went with everything. That was a lot of my thought process when I was packing everything I brought. I was like, what can I wear with more than one thing? Like what can I mix and match? All my pieces were very staple, basic pieces that mix and match very easily with each other. Next, I brought these biker shorts. I actually had two biker shorts. I think I got these from Walmart, and then the other ones are from Lululemon. I liked how my Lulu shorts had the side pockets. That was really helpful for travel days. I don't know that I needed two biker shorts, but I did use them both, so take with that information what you may. Then I only had one pair of leggings. I was able to get by with one pair of leggings, and that was fine. Wore these a lot on my travel days and for layering. Then I had my two jean shorts. I just had one pair that was black and one pair that was a light wash. Wore these all the time. I like the fact that I brought jean shorts that were a bit longer. Can't wear them at temples, but I did feel comfortable wearing them almost everywhere else. I didn't have to worry about like my bum showing or them riding up, and they're high-waisted. So they were really versatile with like crop tops and made me feel very like comfortable and Supported. I just think a good high-waisted jean short is, I don't know, classic. They just went with everything. It was great. Next, I have just these like comfy, stretchy material, black pants. These you can kind of dress up, dress down. I wore these a lot. Um, again, they're kind of like capri length. And yeah, these were really versatile as well. And then this. This skirt. You know, I brought this skirt because I don't wear this a lot when I'm in Canada and I thought maybe I'll wear it when I'm backpacking. Never do that. Never, never bring something on your backpacking trip that you don't wear a lot at home because you're not going to reach for it when you're backpacking. Honestly, out of all the bottoms that I brought, one that I didn't wear that much, I consider that a win. Let's move on to bathing suits. I brought four bikinis. Um, I found that all of them were pretty versatile and great. The only thing that I would not recommend to bring is a white bathing suit. I found that some days when my white bathing suit was a little bit wet and I was on a travel day and I was in between cities, I would have to shove it in a bag with a potentially dark colored bathing suit. And I did find that my brown bathing suit like kind of leaked onto my white one. So it wasn't ideal. Other than that, make sure you bring bathing suits that you like to tan in if you're someone who likes to tan. I found all my bottoms were pretty similar and then my tops gave me like different tan lines that you'll notice that I don't have like really intense tan lines because I was able to like shift out my different bathing suits but that'd be my only tip. My brown one, I use this brown one so much. My brown one was my favorite. I think I'm most photographed in my brown bathing suit. I brought this fun like cheetah print one because this top again different tan lines it kind of goes horizontal almost like a sports bra kind of vibe so I found that that was nice for like different water activities this black one was great um, it this one was the one I probably used the most when I was like snorkeling or underneath my scuba like wetsuit like this was really versatile in that sense as well the black one I brought so four bikinis and then one one-piece bathing suit my one piece, I thought I would get more use out of it doing like underwater activities, but I did find the only time that I used this was when I was surfing. And if you watch my vlogs, my surfing experience was interesting to say the least. I only really wore this when I was surfing, but I still don't regret it because I don't think I would have felt as like secure and comfortable in any other bathing suit while I was surfing, so I don't regret bringing this. Okay, now on to shirts. But before that, I have this thing. This one was just like a little like sarong that I bought in Thailand. 
I did find it really helpful, but not something that you need to pack ahead of time because there's a lot of places that you can buy little sarong wraps. This is really helpful when I went to temples because then I wouldn't have to be wearing a t-shirt all day. You would be surprised the difference between like a t-shirt and a tank top in terms of like comfort in the heat and a tank top was so much more comfortable most days. So I'm glad that I had this that I could just throw on when I got to the temple if the temple was only one stop in my whole entire day because I could just throw this on my shoulders and then take it off to keep myself nice and cool. So definitely recommend buying one of these when you're there. And I also use this so many other ways like when I was at the beach like as a towel before I got my towel. We'll talk about that in a second. And I used it just like as a cover up with my bathing suit and you know, it was just really helpful. Moving on to shirts. I think I only have one shirt that I regret bringing. I had this green t-shirt, use this a lot, especially on travel days. This shirt was very lightweight, so I found I was able to wear that to a lot of temples, even when I was hot. This is a shirt that I bought actually in Thailand. When I saw this shirt, I was like, this shirt is so cool. I need it. Like. <laughs> It's funny because when I bought this shirt, I was with like a group of my friends in Pai in Thailand and it was actually one of my favorite places that I went to. Pai was just so special to me and I was with a group of my friends and I literally made them all come to the store and be like, do you think this one's cool or this one? And we narrowed it down to like this one and one other one and all of my friends unanimously voted on the tiger shirt. So just great memories associated with the tiger shirt. It's super oversized, so I used it all the time like as a cover up and you know, going to the beach and it just gave me that cool backpacker girl vibe that I was really going for. Then I have this shirt that I acquired in my travels from scuba diving in Koh Tao. It's just a little tank top and it has a funny saying on the back. <laughs> in terms of my tank tops, Okay, here's my tip for tank tops. Thicker material, only one of my tank tops was thicker material. Didn't reach for it as much because of the thicker material. I feel like this whole video is just me talking about how hot I was in so many places. Tank tops that I didn't have to wear a bra in, that were a darker color, like the Sunday best, like high neck black tank top. Grabbed for this all the time. So easy to throw on, goes with everything. Loved it. Tank tops like this, little crop top, again, don't have to wear a bra, don't have to wear a bra, vibing. Lightweight, don't have to wear a bra. Lightweight, don't have to wear a bra. These are tanks I grabbed for all the time. Here are my downfalls, I think. First off, this tank top. Now, this tank top is comfy. It is perfect in every way, shape, or form. Don't have to wear a bra, versatile. The only thing is, I was scared to wash this at certain points. I didn't wear this that much because I didn't want it to get dirty, and then I didn't want it to get dirty because I didn't want to wash it, because I had a lot of friends who washed a white material top of theirs, and then it was a different color when they got it back out of their laundry. Because when you're backpacking, you don't really do your own laundry. You take it to like someone to do your laundry. At least that's the norm in Asia because it's very cheap. And sometimes if they had a white shirt, it would get ruined. and. This is a really good quality white shirt that I bought from a sustainable company and I really, really didn't want it to get ruined. So there was a point where I just stopped wearing this all together and then it was just dead weight in my backpack. I would not recommend bringing anything white when you're backpacking. Now, here's the shirts that I didn't grab for as much. Now this shirt is a shirt that I had just gotten before my trip. I thrifted it. I thought it was cute for a going out top. Um, only wore it a couple times going out. Sometimes I was just like, I don't want to say lazy, but I just got in that backpacker vibe where like I wasn't in the mood to wear like a cute going out top. I literally would just throw on a tank top and some hoop earrings and call it a day. That is just something to think about. Everyone's different, of course. Something else that I didn't grab for and wear that much is this bodysuit that I brought. And that's because Again, it wasn't easy to throw on. It's a bodysuit. I had to hook it together. And I know that sounds so silly, but it's so true. Like I, I'm thinking like, why didn't I grab for this as much? And it's because it wasn't as easy to throw on as the rest of them. And then sports bras. Okay, I brought two sports bras. I brought one black one and then this one. My black one is in the wash because I wore it to yoga the other day. But yeah, two sports bras was fine. Honestly, I wore my black one a lot because it kind of looks like a shirt, so 
that worked as well. I think on my next trip, I could probably just wear one sports bra. Depends how much physical activity you're doing. This is just me getting real nitpicky because I think for my next backpacking trip, as light as I packed, I think I could go even lighter. And so these are the things I'm thinking about as I'm unpacking all of my stuff. Bras, man, I did not wear these bras like ever. I think, okay, no, that's a lie. I wear a bra once in a while and for that reason, I only think I need one bra. I'd probably bring like my lighter color bra just so it was more versatile, but yeah. One bra is all that's needed. Now, oh, hoodies. Now, I left with one hoodie, but I came home with two hoodies. And I know you're thinking, Rachel, you have just talked to us for the last five minutes about how hot everything was. However, I had to get this hoodie because it was from one of my favorite places ever, the Pie Hole, okay? Yes, I got it from Pie Thailand. Look at the back. Tell me this isn't the coolest hoodie ever. You can't, it says pie hole on the front and back. Me and my friend Shira got matching sweaters. Shout out Shira, I love you. And so it's just like a nice memory. Even though it was big and bulky, I was able to like squish my one hoodie in my bag and then the other hoodie on any travel days, I would just wear it like around my waist. Not recommending to buy a hoodie <laughs> when you're backpacking Southeast Asia, but I just saw this and I could not help myself. I, I needed this hoodie. I wear hoodies all the time in Canada, so it was a good purchase for me. But yes, I just had my pie hoodie and then this other just like oversized black hoodie as well. In terms of socks, I think that I had packed three socks and then I had one that I was wearing on my feet. So together I had four socks. I think this was a good amount of socks. I utilized it like when I was in Vietnam and doing the Hajang loop and stuff like I needed a couple pairs of socks. Um, so I think four was a good amount. I never found myself running out of socks because I didn't wear them that often, but that's just because of the type of trip and the type of countries that I was going to. This was a sleeping bag liner. Now this was very, very convenient. I was almost debating whether, like how I wanted to go in this video talking about this, whether I liked it or didn't. The only thing I found that was annoying, like I clipped it to the outside of my bag on a carabiner. However, the bag itself has seen better days. Like it's, it was ripping. So like maybe if I got a better bag, I'd consider bringing this on another backpacking trip. You know what? No. I utilize this a lot. I utilized this when I was freezing cold in the Sapa Hills. I utilize this on airplanes. I utilize this when I was in some really sketchy hostels. You know what? I take it all back. I do recommend bringing a sleeping bag liner. But next time when I go on a backpacking trip, I'll either re-sew this bag back together or get a bag or a little carrying case that's stronger. Carabiners. Let's take a moment of silence and appreciation for carabiners. I have a couple, here's some of mine. I think I had like two more. These were so useful. I clip my shoes on with, I think I'd recommend bringing like one big carabiner if you have like shoes, like Crocs, like I could slip my Crocs on these, amazing. Small carabiners for like, you know, sleeping bag liners and stuff like that, um, flip flops, bathing suits. Carabiners were just 10 out of 10. People recommended that I bring carabiners on this trip. I love you. Oh, something else that's like clothing-esque wise. This is something that I bought and something that I recommend now after experiencing my first major backpacking trip a little towel. These are hard to find when you're traveling. So I recommend buying one of these before you leave. Just a tiny, look how tiny it is. I literally fit it into the side pocket of my Eagle Creek main backpack. And that didn't take up much room at all. Definitely recommend. This was good not only for like drying my body after I shower when the hostel towels were disgusting, but it was also good for when I was at the beach. This is my main little bag that I brought. Honestly, the pickings were slim. This was like the only backpack that I could buy in Koh Tao. I think it's a good backpack, but I don't think I would use it again as like my personal item. Mainly because it didn't have like side pockets um, that you could put water bottles in. It just kind of has these things. So these were good to clip things onto, but I really missed having a spot to put a water bottle in, to be honest. Another thing is that the shoulders weren't padded. Um, as well and they were kind of like the straps were really close together so I was like choking myself out sometimes it was hard to wear on my front like I found it 
way less comfortable than my other backpack was so just little things like that i do like this bag in general and i'll use it for like weekend trips it came with a little strap that you can attach on and turn it into a duffel bag so i did like that like i think it's a versatile bag i just wouldn't use it again for my personal item when I'm backpacking. Okay, so let's talk about what was in here. First thing that I was always put in the bottom was my medication bag is what I call it. Um, some things I love that I used, I put electrolytes in here. Those were great for days that I was hungover. Those were great for days that I was feeling a little sick, a little under the weather, needed some more energy. Used a lot of those. Those would have also been great if I had gotten traveler's diarrhea, but your girl did not get it. Didn't get Bali Belly, didn't get traveler's diarrhea. I use this bug spray all the time. Definitely bring yourself a tiny bug spray. Gravel, I did use a lot for motion sickness, and I also used it on the flight home to kind of like knock myself out. You'll notice that I separated a lot of my stuff in my personal item with plastic bags. Definitely recommend this. Not only was it easy to like see what was in the bag because it was clear, also if something leaked in your bag, you wouldn't get all of your stuff wet. How I organize things is like medication, electronics, and then convenience and like miscellaneous. And so, because I organized it that way, I was always able to find what I needed. Nothing was too cluttered. A plus plus. The only thing I didn't really use is this little hand fan. I did not use this that much. It is really freaking cute, but would not bring in on another trip. Ooh, something I recommend, and this was a need, and this is like a need. You just need this when you're backpacking, is locks. So I had this main lock, big lock. You use this on lockers a lot. Sometimes though, the lockers would not let you fit a lock like this on it because it's too thick. So that's where my luggage locks came in handy. I had two of these little luggage locks. These came so handy. Not only was I able to lock my main big backpack with it because it had locks on it, but when lockers at hostels were tiny, you can fit this tiny little lock arm through it. Definitely recommend bringing like an extra lock like I had two bags so I had two locks for those bags and then one extra lock for a locker honestly I I know this is like more locks than I have bags definitely recommend definitely recommend because then if I went on a day trip I can bring one with me if I want or whatnot like it was just always better to have an extra one and then sometimes if I thought like I had lost one it was always good because I had an extra one I also brought a first aid kit didn't have to use it too much other than like a couple band-aids and polysporin but so great to have when you do need it so and you never know if any of your buddies when you're traveling might need it too so just always bring a first aid kit I loved having my little camera I took so many cute little film photos on this some days I would forget to bring it out, but I love this thing so much. Snorkel. Now, here's the thing. I asked my lovely sister for a snorkel for Christmas before I left because I thought that I would have a lot more free time to snorkel than I actually did. That was in part to me just like traveling through some places really quickly that I didn't have a lot of snorkel time. I mainly use this in Bali. I went snorkeling a couple times in Bali. I want to say at times in my trip when I didn't use it a lot, I was like, oh, I kind of regret having this big bulky thing in my bag because it does take up quite a bit of room even if I pack it down like this. However, the luxury of not having to put your mouth on a snorkel that other people have used, I don't know. I think, I don't think I regret it. I don't think I regret it. I liked my snorkel a lot and it was a good snorkel because sometimes the snorkels that you rent aren't as good and then it ruins your snorkeling experience. So you know what, even though this is bulky and I didn't use it that much, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. I would travel with my washcloth and so sometimes the washcloth would be a little wet still and I have to put it in a little bag until I got to my next place. And then I could let it air dry. Something that I saw that I'm really going to consider getting for my next backpacking trip, African net cloths. It's like a washcloth that exfoliates you really well but also has holes in it so it dries quickly. Something to think about. Something to think about for sure if you're a washcloth girly like myself. Something else that I brought that I found really useful, my makeup removing cloth. Even though I did not wear a lot of makeup at all on my trip, I'm glad that I had this for when I did. It was super lightweight and did not take up a lot of room. In terms of cosmetics, here are my main tips for cosmetics. Don't bring that much makeup. Even this little cosmetic bag was too much. I did not wear makeup and I don't know about you, but once you have a tan, I find you don't even need that much makeup. So 
really do some soul searching before your backpacking trip and be like, am I gonna be wearing a lot of makeup? Because the answer is probably no. Then this bag. This bag was like filled to the brim with stuff. Definitely recommend bringing um, a big plastic bag and even like little plastic bags. Stuff is gonna leak from your cosmetics. It's better when you have stuff in a bag. Also, toothbrush holders. Toothbrush holders are gonna make your toothbrush so gross. You need to immediately, when you get to a new place, open your toothbrush, let it out to air dry. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Like, let your toothbrush air dry. I had brought a bunch of cosmetics and the Canadian airport literally took 90% of them away from me because I brought doubles of products because I knew it was gonna be gone for so long. So they played me. The Canadian airport played me. I kept all my jewelry just in this little bag. This is all I brought jewelry wise and I don't regret it, so. Listen up. My aura ring. This is just a ring that I wear. It's kind of like a Fitbit. Tracks my sleep, tracks my menstrual cycle. I like it a lot. I brought big hoops. These hoops were kind of mimicking these hoops that are my real gold hoops, um, but they are waterproof and they are not expensive. So if I lost them, I would not be sad. These little hoops, which were mimicking a little hoops that I wear all the time at home. Again, less expensive. If I lost them, I wouldn't be sad. This chain is mimicking this chain, but this chain's less expensive and waterproof. Do you see the theme here? Um, I brought some hair clips. They were really helpful. Hair ties like this, really helpful to wear. Even little elastics for when you wanna braid your hair. A rain poncho. Even though this is a little bit, takes up a little bit of room, don't regret bringing my rain poncho. I used this a couple times and it was well worth the money. Didn't have an umbrella, but I had this. Highly recommend. I did not use this hat that much at first, but near the end of my trip, I really used it like for keeping the sun off my face at the beach and just day to day. I'm not usually someone who wears a lot of baseball hats, but I did end up wearing it a lot. Okay, this is something that I thought I would use a lot, but alas, I actually didn't. If you watch my packing video, I talk about how I thought this was gonna be so good to have so people wouldn't pickpocket me and whatnot, but like, honestly, did not end up wearing my flip belt a lot, like at all. And now my fanny pack. Definitely recommend bringing a fanny pack. This was really helpful to have at the airport. Um, I would wear it on the side, like on my hip, and then I have my front bag and my back bag. It was good to just like put my phone in there to keep my hands hands free. Um, put my wallet in there. Something that I did that was really smart is I had a, like a flat wallet. So it was long, but it was flat and I kept a lot of good things in here. Kept like obviously cash in here, um, mints and just like little train tickets, stuff like that. Also something that I would always have in my wallet is like an extra camera battery, but that's just if you like to make videos like me. Always have the camera battery and stuff in here. And then I was able to just fit it slimly in this fanny pack. This fanny pack, I liked it, I didn't love it. I found that sometimes when I was out, like I liked that it was versatile, it could be like a purse or it could be like, you could wear it around your waist, but I found that like, it wasn't big enough sometimes and I'm thinking about maybe investing in like a bagu bag or just like, just a bigger fanny pack. Something to note if you are traveling Southeast Asia, always have Kleenex in your fanny pack because sometimes you're gonna go to washrooms and there's not gonna be toilet paper. I would always just have like some sort of mints. Right now I have like these grape mentos that I got from Indonesia and then my earphones. This is because I voice note my friends a lot so I would always want to have the earphones to voice note. Someone mentioned this to me when I was traveling and I thought it was really smart. They said it was a really good idea that I had wired earphones because they found with their AirPods they would either lose their AirPods or they were worried that someone was gonna steal their AirPods. So, wired earphones, they're the way to go when you're backpacking. Also had like a hand sanitizer in here and then just a lip balm. Lip balm had sunscreen in it because you don't wanna burn your lips, they need sunscreen too. Then I would just always keep like a hair tie in here or my spiral hair tie. That was what's in my fanny pack, so. The only thing, if I could fit like my stabilizing camera or my sunglass case in there, that would have been a little bit nicer. So maybe something a little bit bigger for my next backpacking trip. And then um, my neck pillow. I love this neck pillow. If you know me, I've had this neck pillow for a while. It has never let me down before. I can sleep so easily anywhere on it. Only thing I would say is that sometimes it was annoying. It does clip onto my bag and I would clip it on the outside, but I almost wonder if there is another option of neck pillow out there that is like tinier and more compact. I think, that is everything. Oh, my shoes. Sorry, Brendan, I'm almost done. 
You look cute. Look at my setup here. It's a mess. Last but not least, shoes. I left Canada with four pairs of shoes and I unfortunately only returned with two pairs of shoes. <laughs> One of them was my own fault that I lit on fire in Vietnam and the other was some thievery that happened in Cambodia, but watch my vlogs to find out about that. I had flip flops, I had my Crocs, I had a pair of running shoes, and then I had a pair of sandals. Um, I found my sandals were well used, but not my most well used. I think if I had to kill one of these, it would be my sandals. Running shoes, I was sad when I lit my running shoes on fire. I, I do think you need a pair of running shoes. <laughs> um, Crocs, I use these so much. These were like my shower shoes as well. My flip flops, these are ugly flip flops I had to buy in Lao because my flip flops broke, but always good to have a flip, pair of flip flops as well. An overall review of my tour 40 liter travel bag. I really like this backpack. I like that it opened like a suitcase. I like that it had the straps. I put an air tag in it. I liked that it had something that you could like extend the bag to be like a 45 liter accordion style. You can make it a little bigger. I like that there was a spot for putting flat materials like a laptop or paperwork. Um, I liked that it had a cover on it. I liked that there were a lot of places that you can attach stuff on with carabiners. I love this bag. I will be keeping this bag. I will be using it for other backpacking trips in the future. All right, that is all. This is a mess. I wish you guys could see this right now. Um, yeah. That's it. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that is all. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and you consider subscribing to my channel. I make videos on fashion, travel, and environmentalism. Also, I will leave linked in the description of this video a playlist to all my Southeast Asia vlogs. And yeah, that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye! So much back, I think I'm never running out. Yeah, bust me down a little bitch. I don't do this for no clout. Hey, I got so much back, I think I'm never running out.